I've seen a lot of people saying that the end of Dragon specs feel weird to play in PvP, and I totally get that. We've been running the same builds for almost five years now. The Untamed wasn't met with a lot of excitement by the community during the beta weekends, and I was pretty skeptical about its place in the PvP meta, so I decided to give it a shot. If you're new to Untamed, this video is a great place to start. Hey everyone, Tony from Unskippable Cutscene here, and today I'm going to talk about the main concepts behind the Untamed that will help you find your own ways of using it. Of course, I'll be showing you my build while I run this full match in the background for you to see how I'm using my abilities. For those of you who haven't familiarized themselves with the new Ranger Elite spec, the main feature of the Untamed is the Unleashed status. You can toggle this between yourself and your pet, and the one who's unleashed gains access to abilities that punish disabled enemies. For the most part, this requires the hammer to be used, otherwise the main mechanic of unleashing is somewhat wasted on the Ranger. First of all, here's my build. I also dropped it in the description below, so check that out. I'm running Longbow and Hammer. I actually tried running Greatsword instead of Longbow, um, because I personally just prefer melee combat, but I was getting absolutely demolished, and I found that the Longbow lets me get some damage off, and also lets me play a little bit more comfortably. If you're enjoying this, please do feel free to subscribe and like the video. Uh, to my existing subscribers, just a shout out, wanted to say thanks. Uh, it means so much to me to see you guys support the channel, and hopefully I'll keep putting out cool and interesting things for y'all. Quick rundown of the traits. I'm running Skirmishing for increased critical damage and essentially permanent fury while I'm in combat. Next up is Marksmanship, and I'm running this one mainly for the Predator's Onslaught Grandmaster that's going to allow us to deal 15% more damage to disabled foes. So that'll synergize nicely with the Untamed playstyle. And finally, we've got the Elite Spec. Now, there's actually a lot of flexibility here, and there aren't any obviously bad traits in the line. Uh, what you can see here are some more defensive options, so I chose a more defensive build because I was having a rough time while I was learning the class. Um, but I'm probably going to switch these out and get a little bit more aggressive here as I get more comfortable with the spec. The most important defensive trait, in my opinion, is the Restorative Strikes Grandmaster, and that's going to heal us for 10% of the strike damage we deal. If you're using Perilous Gift, like I am, uh, you'll generally want to wait until the last second to activate that heal ability, and once you do, it's only going to restore 33% of your missing health. So uh, if you're all the way dead, it's only going to bring you back to 33%. Restorative Strikes is really a good way of having access to healing uh, over the course of a fight, especially if it's pretty protracted. Now for skills, as I mentioned, uh, I've got Perilous Gift, which prevents death for three seconds and then heals you for a third of your missing health. Uh, basically, pop this at the last second possible to maximize the effective healing by eating up all those uh, attacks that are not going to be able to kill you. And then once it's over, you'll be set to a third of your health and prepare to be targeted because people are going to know that you're vulnerable and that you've got really nothing left in the tank defensively. Our first utility skill is Mutate Conditions, which does double duty as our Stun Breaker and our Condi Cleanse. Next we've got Signet of Stone. Now I originally had the uh, Stun Break slash Condi Cleanse Signet in here just because I didn't want to have only um, one Stun Break and Condi Cleanse, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, um, I was really getting kind of beat up when I started doing this. Burst builds are definitely in this season. Um, and I found that Signet of Stone, usually activated right after Perilous Gift expires, uh, can give you a great chance to go from that one-third health that you're going to be set to uh, and fight your way back to higher health. After that is Nature's Binding, which creates a mini ring of warding around all nearby enemies. So right now, I'm still kind of getting the feel for the Untamed. I don't remember to use this as soon as it's off cooldown every time, um, but it's an insane ability to pop in a team fight, and you should absolutely do it uh, as frequently as you can. It's going to essentially force people to pop stability to get out of it or teleport away. Um, really just a, a great tool to lock down an area, keep everybody right next to you so that you can get all those high damage uh, AoE attacks off. The bazaar is yours. And finally, uh, the elite I've chosen here is Forest Fortification. It's basically a defensive version of Rampage's 1, where instead of getting Might on hit, you're going to take half damage. Ironically, both abilities should really be used in the same context, uh, as Forced Fortification's long cooldown is reduced by hitting people while it's active. So even though it's a defensive ability, you want to use it so that you can go in uh, and keep attacking and stay alive in fray. 
for pets, I've got the Smoke Scale, um, mostly because it's second nature to me thanks to the Doomhorn build, um, but it's also got a good two second knockdown, despite what the tooltip says. It really is a two second knockdown. And my second pet, I'm also actually still running the CM off. Um, yes, because it was in my Doomhorn build, and I like it as a pet. Uh, for the scavenge, but it actually has a three second KD, and that's going to open a huge window for you to really get all those abilities off that deal more damage to disabled foes. So let's talk usage. The, the most important thing to note is that Toggling, who is unleashed, has no activation time and virtually no cooldown. The devs intended for you to weave it unleashing in between your abilities, and that's how we're going to maximize our combos. Be ready to give the signal. And return fire once the cannons are loaded. I won't spend too much time talking about the longbow skills. They've been out there for 10 years and you already know. Use the longbow to wear enemies down from afar and stay at range as long as you can uh, if it's advantageous for you. So let's talk about maximizing the untamed potential. Here are all the CC abilities that we have at our disposal. So this is going to be Mom Hammer and our, both of our pets. Here are the abilities that we have that benefit from disabled enemies. So mastering the untamed in PvP really boils down to unleashing at the right time to string these kind of combos together where you get something out of the CC column and then you get something out of the benefits from hitting disabled enemies column. So opening moves. Um, while I'm still on my longbow, I'll usually send my pet in to get the party started. Uh, unleashed F1 will teleport your pet, which can be great for catching an enemy off guard. Uh, and then I'll unleash again to gain access to their skills. Uh, and just like my Doomhorn engage, I'll actually use the Smoke Scale Assault uh, to start getting some damage off and to actually make sure my pet teleports there uh, and is ready to immediately follow up with Takedown to knock the enemy down. Once the enemy is knocked down, I'll unleash my pet and activate F3 and F2, one right after the other. Uh, F3 is going to create a combo field, a poison combo field, uh, and F2 is going to blast it. And each of those abilities will also chill and slow the enemy, respectively. So it's going to really lock them down, slow them, let them not do anything, um, so that you can get in there and really get started. And it's also going to remove two boons from them. So good way to just clear the slate, let you get in there, and not worry about the enemy having any uh, defenses up. So once the enemy has been softened up, uh, I like to engage with Thump. So it's a two second knockdown. I really like it because it's also got a gap close on it. Once they're knocked down again, I'll immediately unleash. Uh, so it'll be an Unleash Ranger, and I'll activate Unleashed Savage Shockwave. Uh, so it's got a pretty long cast time, so having them knocked down is pretty important to make sure that you actually land it so that you don't get interrupted, and of course so that you get that damage bonus that's built into the skill. The first Ranger the Unleash uh, every 15 seconds is going to trigger an Ambush skill replacement you uh, for your number one. So if you play Thief uh, or Mirage, it's a, a very similar concept. Um, this ability is going to steal health, but it's also going to do a, in case of the hammer, a spinning attack. Uh, it's going to hit really hard. It's awesome. Just make sure you don't accidentally interrupt it by casting a different skill while it's activating, because it can be very easy to just overwrite what's happening. Next, I'll unleash my pet again so that I have access to my CC hammer skills, and I'll use Overbearing Smash. Uh, this is going to cause, it's kind of two attacks. The first one's a short daze, uh, and then it follows up with a long daze. And while I'm doing that, I'll unleash kind of in the middle of the, the second daze there, and I'll get ready to use number two, Wild Swing. So that's going to deal damage. It's going to deal that extra 20% um, just right on the skill description because they are disabled. At this point, I try to remember to uh, pet swap to my CMOP because it's got that great knockdown. Uh, so you can go ahead and use the pet abilities there and then hopefully use that knockdown right before Wild Swing comes back up. One thing that I really love about this class so far is there are so many different ways to set yourself up. So give it a try and see what feels best for you. Uh, so one thing that I really thought was cool was, uh, for example, the CMOP's three second knockdown. Uh, that's actually enough to get off both the Unleashed Shockwave, the number four, and the Unleashed Wild Swing, all off of one CC. 
Uh, so likewise, the Unleashed Pet skills have almost no activation time, and you can chain those together on a single disable as well. So kind of the, the faster you get at recognizing when to be unleashed, when not to be unleashed, uh, that's going to allow you to chain all these abilities together and really compress your uh, skill bar and get a lot more done per disable. Since the Untamed really only relies on the hammer to function properly, there's a lot of flexibility to be had with your utility skills. As I mentioned, in this case, um, I chose pretty much defensive everything here. Um, and that was overkill. I don't think I even went under half health this entire match. So moving forward, I'll probably s switch things out. I might end up taking Exploding Spores instead of Signet of Stone. I've never even tried it, but, you, you know, find that sweet spot for you where you're comfortable with the amount of defense you have, the utility is good enough to get you out of most scenarios, um, but you can also deal as much damage as possible, because really at the end of the day, that's what PvP is about. Now, I know this build is definitely not something you're going to end up seeing in, you know, legendary rank PvP, but it's a good place to start, so try it out. Um, it's, like I said, it's got all the defense you need. Um, good way to learn the class and still be able to keep yourself on the battlefield. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Uh, just wanted to say thanks again for watching. I uh, really hope you'll subscribe and join our little community here. Uh, and if you have any cool Untamed builds, uh, I'm still playing around with it. I'd love to see what your ideas are. Uh, and hopefully I'll get to try some of those out as well and report back on how they did. So thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony. This is Unskippable Cutscene. Hopefully we'll see you again soon.